Up now. How you guys doing out there? This is Aphex Twin. I was inspired to play Aphex Twin because I keep I keep looking at these um the new shit right now for uh for models is getting weird looking models. Like I keep seeing it on my IG feed. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna start like calling people out to make them feel bad, but like yeah, they got they yeah, they they OD in with this model shit. You just did you just pull up the one? That wasn't even the one I was talking about. The Down Syndrome model, she looked kind of interesting. You know what I'm saying? She looked exotic in a way. But this one bitch looked like Aphex Twin in the face. If I don't know if anybody knows what Aphex Twin looked like, but he's an ugly motherfucker. I'm like, I feel like I'm in like this post. I'm in this new world where like up is down and down is up. Like, why would I want like, if I just saw some ugly motherfucker wearing some shit, I wouldn't be like, yeah, I want to look like him. That fucking weirdo. I think they do it to try to get, like, fucking cool points and show how fucking, how woke they are. Now, that being said, I'm also against, uh, doing the, uh, doing the whole fucking airbrushing out the, airbrushing chicks and shit like that. I think that's bullshit. But this ugly on purpose shit, miss me with that shit, son. Miss me with that shit. I don't know if you were listening to yesterday's show. You know, I don't like it because it's contrived. You know what I mean? They're like, oh, let, let us show you guys what, like, fucking how... How accepting we are. We're gonna get this ugly broad and put her in a fucking outfit. Ugly broad. Ain't nobody look at the, ain't nobody looking this chick and was like, damn, man, she's gonna sell a million shirts. She's so fucking pretty. You know what I mean? They were like, let's do her a favor and we'll, we'll, it'll look like we're woke. I'll have to see her for myself. Let me show, yeah. Cause that's the other thing, like, like, I'm not, not, I'm not even gonna say who it is or no shit like that. Cause like, she can't help her face. You know what I mean? Like, it, she was born the way she was fucking born. Man, come here. Look at this shit, John. Walk in here. Come on, man. <laughs> Just look at... All right, John. Come on. All right, I'm bringing... I'm showing John a picture. All right, you ready? <laughs> what is going on there? <laughs> Bro, that's what I'm saying, man. <laughs> come on, man. Fuck out of here. Oh, my. Oh, Even, would you smash, John? I wouldn't say no. I, I'd have to take a closer look. You're a fucking lie, bro. <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't even talking about the Down Syndrome one that you pulled up. Kind of jumped the gun on that one. I, I, I love everyone. You know, it's like, cold. the Down Syndrome model look better than that model I showed you. <laughs> I I have no opinion on that. Whatever, man. Uh, what the fuck ever. Yo, so, hey. These fucking Indian motherfuckers keep trying to finesse me and get money out of me for dick pills and shit. And they just hit me back. You only, you only, you, y'all want to fuck with him again? Let's call him. I don't know. Man, why are you such a bitch, John? God damn. <laughs> they trying to steal, they trying to take food out of my mouth. Are they really in India? I mean, who, who are these people? Shh. All right, fine. What's up, man? I'm fine. You tell what about you? Strange. I still haven't got those pills yet. Yeah, so I text you, right? Uh, they have shipped that medication. Oh, did you? It'll take two days to, yeah. So it, you you said that. Like, you said it take. Sorry? You said it's gonna take two days. No, actually, we shipped that. So I just take the status today. It's showing me on Pranjis. It's in Pranjis. So it will take hardly two days to, like, uh, get the two statements. You will get the package. Uh, most probably from Friday, you will get the package. Do you know what I think you're trying to do? No. You know, do you know what I think you're trying to do? I think you're trying to butt fuck a grown man. Why are you trying to butt fuck a grown man? If you if you don't get the package, if you don't get the package. Who is this? Don't pay to me. Is this Alan? Which one is this? Yeah. This is Alan. Sorry. What's your no, name? No, no, no. This, my name is Eric. Eric. Yeah, Alec. Yeah. Alec. Yeah. So uh, what I'm, what I, I gave you the tracking number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tracking number, my ass. <laughs> 
and the same tracking the tracking number and the same package is going to deliver to you in a few days it's showing me all time yes you a fucking liar no no i'm not i'm not lying with you because in that i'm not getting anything you haven't paid to me now you a liar not getting anything you trying to fuck me not over not lying with you you always trying to finesse how many how many how many of these th- things you do a day you lying ass you don't say like that because you know that I, you haven't paid to me I hope your cow dies I hope your cow dies you lied no, to me once you will get the package then you will pay me right yeah I'll give you the money you been you, the package been on its way for the last week and a half So we, I told you, we haven't get the money from your side. So why, why will I ship the package? But see, I have shipped the package. See, that's what I'm saying. You trying to fuck a no. motherfucker? You trying to fuck me, Alex? You was like, we sent the why package out money? already. Why now, now you said you didn't send out the package. You haven't paid. You haven't paid the money. Then still have. Then also, I shipped the package. Yeah, I thought so. You a fuck? You, you a con artist? I hope your dick falls off. I hope I hope that I hope your dick falls off. You can talk to my manager. Fuck your manager. I'm talking to you. Hello. Hey, are you the manager? Yeah. Why don't you yes, suck my dick? Yeah. What do you manage? What do you manage? Fucking grown man over? You fucking lying ass piece of shit. Sorry? Oh, don't you sorry me. Where's my dick pills? Hello? Where's my fucking dick pills? It's uh it's in transit I'm, to the next yeah. facility your package is moving within the USPS network and They so, it, see this shit, they so package. full of shit. You so you are, you y'all motherfuckers some lying ass motherfuckers. Look, man. Found it. Now let we, me tell you. Let me tell you. What, what you gonna tell let me? Let me tell you. One tell one. me. Yeah, listen. Uh, you place your order, okay, on 11th of September, right? And you transfer the amount, okay, to the bank. Why you talking? All, why you trying to? Why you trying to all calm talk me, man? Fuck you. What's your name? You don't have manners. Oh, you don't got a. Oh, you, you don't, don't got a name. You. No, no, you don't have manager talk. You don't have a manager talk. I don't need, bro. I need subtitles to understand half the shit you saying to me right now, bro. So, uh, uh, have you paid the amount? Yeah, I, pay, yeah, I amount? paid the amount. Yep, I paid the amount. Where's my motherfucking pills? You lying ass you motherfucker. Have you have paid the amount, bro. You have transferred them. You have cheated. You have cheated the company. Okay. I cheated the company. I'm gonna come over there. I'm gonna yes, fuck you your wife. I'm fucking your wife with them dick pills. I'm gonna fuck your wife, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you're gonna have a half white baby that you're gonna have to raise because of me. I don't care how stinky your wife is. Listen to me. Listen to me. I'm putting dick in your wife because you're a piece of shit. I got money to burn. I'll fly. I'll fly. To, I'll fly to India. I'll ride a goat to your goddamn whatever, whatever piece of shit little fucking hovel hut that you live in, and I'm putting dick to your wife, and I'm leaving. Dude, are you mad? I'm very mad. What? What? Why so? Because you're trying to steal, bro. You a thief. What is still? Still, have you paid a single? Have you paid a single cent? Have you paid single cents? Nope, cause you lying. Lying. Yeah, you a fucking liar. Okay, just listen, listen one thing. Uh, open USPS dot com, okay, and put your tracking number. Yeah. Track the package and see what is what is. Yeah. Status. As soon as I get the package, I'll send you your money and I'll send an apology. But you know, I don't think that's gonna happen. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna send my dick over there to fuck your wife, and you got if you got kids of age, I'll fuck them too. What do you listen? 
Can you talk to me? No, bye. And quit calling me. <laughs> Every day. Every fucking day. It's me versus those Indians. Every day. Some guy was like, fuck those guys. I'll take care of you. I'm good. I got fucking dick pills for days. I just don't appreciate them trying to fucking run a scam. And then they don't stop calling me. Y'all want their number? (laughs) (laughs) Y'all want their number? I'll put it up on Twitter for 10 minutes. I was being nice. They so they so full of shit. They was like, "Yeah, we mailed your shit out, the tracking number." I'm like, "Okay." Jay Walk got a question. The we click on him. Mm-hmm. Jay Walk, what up, though? Yo, what up, dude? So all I gotta know is if this is actually the real Dick Pill Company. And not the fucking troll spam dick pill company. Are you actually going to send them the money? Yeah, yo, if it's a real, if it's really them, I'll send them the money. But I already talked to my guy. I talked to, I talked to Sam. That's oh, why. Right, all right, so you me know and Sam. That you know that this is yeah, I called up like, Sam. I said Sam. I said Sam. You got a guy named fucking Alec working for you? Or I said Alan. He said Nah. I said he said I'm the only one that works here. And I was like, All right, these motherfuckers trying to pull a fast one. Fuck that shit, yo. Yep. Call him every day. Give the number out. I'm going to do it on Twitter right now. All right, word. I'm going to look for it. Score, yep. I'll talk to you, yo. Yeah, there it is. Later. Yep. Yo, I'll be the first one. I'll be the first. If if I get whatever pills they send to me, I'll be the first one to give them the money. I ain't no thief. But they've been calling me up with a different tracking number for the last fucking nine days. Like, oh, hello, here's your tracking number. I'm like, bro, this is the third tracking number you gave me, man. (laughs) All right. We got Tech Talk. We got Too Short. We got the news. Got a new intern today. Look at that. Fucking A. Brand new day. Throw on the mic. What's up, new intern? What's your name? Uh, Lilith. Lilith? Yes. All right, Lilith up in this bitch. Are you familiar with Hindu dick pills? Oh, don't do that to me. Unfortunately, no. I'll tell you all about them later. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Lilith. All right. This is what we got. We got uh, tech tech shit coming up. Oh, and also, did I ask this shit on the air or not? Did I, did I ask for the sex doll guys to hit me on the air? All right. Um, on my Instagram, there's a listener that, like, runs the sex doll shit. And he was like, yo, I got a sex doll for you to try out. And we would like to come in and talk about it. And then I lost his fucking info because I get so many fucking messages on my IG shit. So if you are that guy with the sex doll, please get at me. I was going to try it out and then give it to you when I was done, John. Would you take it? Uh, that, that, That might be too much. You can take the pussy out. Oh, I can swap that out? Yeah, you can swap out the pussy. Oh, yeah. Let's and I ain't going to kiss it or nothing like that. Bring it on. <laughs> Bring it on. Damn it. Got I'll, it. I'll make sure I wipe it down with a towel and some wet wipes before I give it to you. Damn, that was quick than a motherfucker, right? He ain't even had to think about it. So, yeah, hit me on IG if you the sex doll people. Yo, th- yo, and they had, like, the legit... 20 grand sex dolls like these was like really yeah these was yo yo 
Yo, John, these sex dolls was official. He was like, we want you, we re- I really want you to try these bitches out. I'm like, all right, well, I want to, I want you to talk to me about them. I want to learn about the sex dolls. He's like, yeah, I'm with it. So if you're listening, man, please hit me. Are you, know, or if you know the fucking dude. Alex said we finna be Eskimo brothers. That's the only way you fucking after me. I'll never fuck after you, John. Ever. What's your I'll never fuck after you. If I was fucking a girl and she was like, oh, I had fucked John, I will pull pull my dick out and chop it off. <laughs> there are a couple you probably. Because I don't want none of that loserness oh. stuck to me. I don't want no loser. I don't want no, no loser DNA stuck to me. They bounced back. They haven't lost yet. And I s- soaked them with my... Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, all right. They, all right, I'm about to throw that number up right now. Rude underscore Jude. And I'll have it for a little second. Boop. All right. And just put it up. I'm taking it down in 10 minutes. You were going to war with these people. Yo, they scammers, dog. Fuck them. And then, then the worst part is they won't stop. They won't stop the scam. I'm like, bro, I already talked to the, I already talked to the guy. You're fucking lying. And they won't back down. They won't be They're They're like, no, no, no. It's in the mail. It's not in the mail. It's in the mail. It's yeah. It's, it's like, bro, like, stop, man. Quit calling me. Just give up. <sighs> Jeremy and Jeremy and Med Jeremy. Jeremy. You what up? What up, though? Hey man, I uh, heard you looking for that sex though, man. I got that one the teeth with the dick, and it's got the other dick coming out the tail. Figured you and John could use that together. I think I'm passing that one. A chick with a dick. It had two dicks on it. No, nah, no, nah, it's it's a sheep, man. It's got the, it's a sheep sex doll. It's got the dick, and then the tail I, could also be used as dick. So that way, uh, that way, John can sit on the back while you while you got the front. Thanks, man. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Hey, man, I'm just fucking with you, CEO of the West Coast. So I just want to my man for your show, man. Appreciate it. Thanks for yeah, saying yeah. I fuck animals. I appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, my cousin wouldn't put you on his station if he didn't like you, man. You know what I'm bang bang! All right, appreciate you, man. No, nah, really, it was really a real sex doll, motherfucker. That was like official. That builds them, motherfuckers. It's gonna be like it's gonna be like your birthday, John. Because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give the measurements. I don't give a fuck. It's but it's gonna be real hard for me to lug this fucking sex doll into the fucking into the hotel room. You know what I mean? <laughs> hotel room. Well, I'm staying in New York. You, like, oh, got it. So got I'm it. gonna get the sex doll in New York. So I'm gonna have to bring the fucking. Oh, I'm gonna have to like roll up into the fucking the Arlo Hotel with a goddamn sex doll. Like you're carrying a body. Yeah, it's gonna be rough. Jason. Yeah. All right. So what's up? You, it's it's your people that do the sex doll company. Yes, it is actually. My my buddy, so he's got a connection in China. He said he spoke to you earlier through Instagram. He yep. just called me and told me about that. All right. So tell him to DM me again because I lost. I lost. Tell him to DM at All Out Show because I lost his fucking shit because I get so many messages I could not find it. That's no problem. Yeah, he said he was interested in maybe coming out to California, and uh, we're both in New York. Well, I'm gonna be in as well. That's what I'm saying, bro. I'm gonna be in New York. Uh, I'm gonna be in New York in like a month, so we'll just do it out there. That would be great. Yeah, that would be great. I gave him my number, so he's got my contact information. Uh, I'm actually patenting a product myself, so maybe I could get that into your uh, into your show as well and show you that. That's gonna be a new product that's hitting the market pretty shortly. So I'd love to present it to you and all the show if we could do can, that. Can you give me a hint? Like what 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 direction it's going uh, in? Yeah, it's in the it, what's the direction is is bringing your toys that you already have uh, a little bit more lifelike and uh, warmer to the toys that you have. 
I, my patent is pending right now. I'll be right. to show it to you and give you a couple samples. And, you know, it's a very cool thing. It's not really out there yet. So uh, That's what's I'd love up. to show it to you, though. All right. Yeah, I'm 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 going to try out one of the sex dials, and then I'm going to give it to John. <laughs> You're a wild to, man. Give it to John. <laughs> Cause I can't, I can't just, I can't just have a sex doll just chilling in. I got a one bedroom apartment, you know what I mean? Like I, I, I got nowhere to put a sex doll. I have a room. I know, but you would like, you don't even got a bed, so like you having a sex doll in the corner wouldn't be the biggest weird. <laughs> that wouldn't be the weirdest thing. Fits in. All right, got Jason on hold. Look at that, fucking lining it up. I wonder how those guys in India are doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, let's do tech talk. That is coming up. Rich DeMiro. Don't go nowhere. You are checking out the All Out Show with Rude Jude on demand. It's tech talk only on the All Out Show. Rich DeMiro, what up, man? Hey, what's going on? KTLA is on. Thanks for having me back. Thanks for slumming it. With the J-Man. Always fun. Yeah. <laughs> We're not slumming it. Well, you just followed me arguing about Hindu dick pills, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that was quite the uh, the argument. I love that. Yes. Yeah. I'll get them. You will. I will. You're, you're coming. You're, you're right. I'm coming. You're there. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get those motherfuckers. All right. There's been a lot going on in tech since the last time we spoke. Uh, you went to, you went, did you go up to see the Apple shit? I did. I'm going to shit on Apple for a second. Go ahead. They've been a bit lackluster the last few, what do they call, what, what are their, their little like, unveilings or whatever? Yeah, they're, special event. Yeah, their little special events have been kind of shit. They'll be like, hey, we've got a new camera. <laughs> like, wow, fucking, I sit in here and watch three hours for that, like... How was this one? I I understand that. I mean, I see it, it's tough because, you know, they can't come out with something amazingly new every time. We would like that, right? Like, I want the screen, the holographic screen that, like, jumps out at me. It's like yeah. 3D, you know, Princess Leia, like, just coming up from my phone. Talk to me. We don't have that yet. But they keep doing these little things that are kind of cool. And I admit the camera hasn't really come that far you yeah, know samsung's beating in in the head bro samsung the google pixel is pretty is great yeah. you know i mean really nice and we're gonna see that next month they've got a new one coming out so i mean but it's tough because once these people get into this apple world it's got, hard to get it, it, it bro i'm stuck like i'm i can't get out that's the thing i'm and surrounded that's what they like they love that shit and imagine imagine giving up iMessage, facetime you know, people have Apple TV. They've got an iPad. There's I got all my songs. That's that's most of the shit. My music, bro. I mm. don't even know how to not. I don't know how to play my music nowhere else. Like a lot of people, that's that's. I mean, that's what they, they got like. Me. They yeah. make it. They make it simple to get in, but really tough to get out. It's like a. They like dope dealers. Yeah. <laughs> that's so. What is what is their new shit? Because they does that make them lazy? It doesn't make them lazy. I mean, because they still are making better stuff. I think that the bigger thing is like how much we're paying for this stuff. Like they're not lowering prices necessarily. They're actually kind of making them more. Yeah. So when people want to get in on this stuff, it's like now that you've had a couple iPhones, you're like, all right, I want the new one. Oh, wait, that's even more than last time. Yes. But they are they are coming with more features. But they the new things that they put out, they got the new iPhone. So they got three new iPhones. Do, are, do any of them got eighth inch jacks? No, that's it. That's done. And <sighs> that's it. There's no more home button either. So now at this point, Apple doesn't even sell a phone with the little jack that you can put the headphones in. That's it. That's some hoe ass shit. I'm going over that. I'm going over to Android. But the only phone over there now is Samsung. That's it. They're the last ones there. They're with doing the eighth inch jack. Yeah. I mean, it's are you getting, fucking kidding me? It's getting bad. I like the eighth inch jack. I understand. I, I do too because I like to, you know, I I work in TV for a living and I I like to record interviews and stuff and so yeah. I plug in a lot of little things to that. That's the same. That's the same deal. I got some headphones that mm -hmm. I can talk and play the music at the same time with the eighth inch jack. I got a. I'm walking around with a fucking theme song, and they take they take they robbing that of me. <laughs> I, you gotta. I'll, I'll bring your letter to Tim Cook next time. Yeah, I'm sure. I'll give. I'm sure Tim Cook gives a fuck. 
<laughs> so they, they got so what the, are they doing then? So they got the phone. Okay. Uh, three phones. The Apple Watch, and it's funny because a lot of people said the Apple Watch stole the show, which I kind of agree with. Because the phones, I get it. Like, people don't go crazy over the iPhones anymore. When you need an upgrade, you go in there, you ask the guy at the Apple store, hey, uh, what does this one do? How much is it? And you kind of make your decision there. Right. With the watch, though, it's interesting because they added some new features that if you're into sports, uh, fitness, yeah. well-being, any of this ringing a bell? <laughs> I wear it. Look, actually, I'm wearing a I'm wearing an old school Omega. So yeah, that's nice. Yeah, but it doesn't tell me my heartbeat or no doesn't shit tell like your, that. So this one will not only it'll tell your heartbeat. So it's called the Series Four now. So All right. it's a fourth generation. Yeah. So it'll tell your you know it's always told your heartbeat, but now it will tell you if your heart gets too high or too low. All right. So it, it pings you throughout the day, like it kind of takes your heart rate throughout the day. Um. You can also take an ECG now. What the fuck does that mean? You know, that's like, have you ever think where they hook you up with like all those things on your chest? Oh, yeah, yeah, And at the doctor, you know, they do like that whole thing where it's like a scan of your heart to like see how it's doing. They can ECG you through your fucking... Right through your watch. So you put your finger on the right side for 30 seconds and it scans you. This isn't it. This is the old version. I'll start doing it as soon as I get STD tests. (laughs) Like as soon as I can start (laughs) STD tests in my ass... That that's when I'll get a fucking. That's when I'm on board. We'll put that in the letter too. Fuck yeah, you know, like, shit. You could be like about to fuck and be like, all right, put your finger up on there, and they do it, and then I do it, and then like raw dog, and if they could tell me if they're ovulating, <laughs> oh boy, that'd be awesome. And it's like splat splat. I uh, mean, like there are some apps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I like the perspective you bring to the Apple event. You know, the, the you know the, the reporters <laughs> I listen to are just not covering these angles. The, I like this. I'm look. These got, are the features people want. I got a wacky point of view. I'm telling you, these are this is this is what people need to know. Like, am I burning? Like, is this a tingle or just an itch? You know what I mean? <laughs> I could see the commercials now for that. Yeah. You know? No, they could do it all. Be safe together. You know, they're like a couple in the field or some shit like that, watching a <laughs> fucking sunset, trying to see if they're burning or not. Like, I, that'd be dope. Oh, right, so man. They, they got that EKG. What else they got on the watch? Okay, so remember those old commercials, I've fallen and I can't get up? Oh, yeah. Life, was it Lifeline? Uh, like Life Alert, something like that. Help, I've fallen and I can't get up. Right. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So that feature is now built into the Apple Watch. So you can you it's got an accelerometer and it basically figures out Apple has mapped all kinds of different falls, trips, slips, big falls, little falls, and it's got an algorithm that can tell you when you've fallen and you can't get up. Now here's the thing. When that happens and the watch senses it, so like let's say you take a big fall, it will give you 60 seconds to respond. And if you don't respond, it calls the police. Fuck that shit. Oh, Fuck that shit, bro. Are you, you kidding me? You don't like that? Hell, motherfucker, no, I don't like that shit. No. <laughs> Rich, you know how many times I've been fucked up and, like, just fucked up out of my mind and, like, collapsed in my house and then, like, come to? And you don't want anyone to come... Hell no! I'm high as hell. I'm fucked up. The last thing I want to hear is like, sir, are you okay? Like, I'm not answering the door. Well, then you might not like the second part of this. What? There's more? Yeah. It texts all your friends, your you location. Fucking, get the fuck out of here. Well, the people you choose. So can't you, you speed it up to like 25 minutes or some shit like that? Like, because I'm right there with you. Like, maybe you're like... a. Like, well, it was a Demi Lovato ass. Like, oh yeah, you know, you got like, you get you get your hands on some bad dope or something like that. That 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 would be helpful. Maybe she was wearing an Apple Watch. Yeah, the Apple Watch would be like, do 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 do, fentanyl alert. Fuck. <laughs> I'm falling and I can't get up. Yeah, that was the one. That's it. <laughs> so they're gonna they. So now they got it hooked up where the cops will come help you. Cops will come help you. You know how many you know how many f- uh, false alerts they're gonna get on that? They're gonna be so bummed by they're this shit. Get a lot. And here's the other thing: now the new iPhone 
and Apple Watch, they send a better location. They have this new thing built in for 911 where it's actually sending a better location of where you are, like a more precise. Damn. So they're going to be – I mean, I think it's a good thing. You know, Obviously, there's a lot of people out there that could benefit from this, but there are the people that are like, I don't want that. And you could turn it off. I would turn that shit all the way the fuck off. But think about this. This is just the beginning. Okay, you, you've got that feature. Imagine, you know, they sense you get into a car crash. They okay. send help. I mean, there's this is not yet, but you could see them expanding that feature. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, like, well, that one kind of makes sense if you they they're tracking they can they can track you right by. So if you're going real fast and you fucking stop real right. fast, and right. like skip across the street, they could maybe tell that like you flew out a fucking window. They might they might not send help in that case. <laughs> For real? I don't know. They're just they might just be like, uh, no one could survive that. You know my homie my homie, he's like one of them science motherfuckers. He uses the Apple Watch to do Coke. How? Well <laughs> let's he fucking he'll chop up a bunch of lines of blow and he he'll toot that shit and then once because here's the problem for people that don't know about coke. When you do coke, I I never done coke. I'm gonna be all the way real with you, but I've watched this. When you do coke, you just keep wanting to do more coke. First, it'll be like oh, once every twenty minutes, then once every, once every fifteen minutes, then once every ten minutes, then once every five minutes, and then you're all yacked out of your mind. So wow. what he does is he uh. He just tracks his shit, and once it once his heartbeat gets below a certain level, that's when he knows to re up on his. He he does another line. Wow, these are uses of the Apple Watch that I would never have thought of. You can tell <laughs> tell you could tell it at, at KTLA when when you're talking to them. Be like, a, <laughs> when, when when they have you on there, you could just explain that shit to them. I might have to rewrite my report on Friday. Yeah, <laughs> about the new Apple Watch. Yeah, Apple Watch, great for Coke use. I you know I no yeah I don't know that might be a tough tough sell to the producers, but I'll try it. Um, let's see what else can this thing do? Uh, walkie talkie. That's gangster. So that's kind of cool. That Remember, was like those old, uh, what was it, Nextel phones? Bleep, bleep, right? Yeah. So now you've got that on your wrist. You All just right. tap, talk to someone. They can talk right back to you. That's it's like a little walkie-talkie system. That's a gangster. That's kind of fun. Yeah. I mean, look, all my homies that got the watches, they they like them bitches. I, it's funny. It's It's gotten to the point where I actually think the watch is more exciting than the phone. Yeah. And the phone kind of does whatever, but the watch, I mean, the fact that it, it catches you if you fall, you know, with the police, yeah. um, the fact that it checks your heart rate, the fact that it you know tracks your workouts, tells you when to eat, shows you what you're playing on your phone, like all that stuff is pretty cool, and it just keeps getting better. Versus the the phone is cool, but it's been kind of doing the same thing for a couple of years now. Yeah, I don't see, I don't need anything else out of the phone to be all the, to keep it one billion with you. Like, right? I just, I just need to fucking be able to like. I'm in a fantasy football league right now. I need to be able to update my fantasy football and check my Instagram. Battery. Battery would be nice. Like a, a week-long battery. Yeah, the battery. That would be nice. Did Is the battery better on these shits? Because my, my battery's on some bitch shit, man. My battery dies quick than a motherfucker. Well, depends on the phone. But the two, the two new models, they either a half an hour or an hour and a half extra battery. But, again, it really depends what you do. Like someone... You know, told me like, oh, my Apple, my Apple Watch lasts forever on a battery. I said, well, it depends how much you're using it. If you're if you're going on a big run every day, yeah, it's not going to last as long as someone who's not going on a big run because it's not using as much GPS. So it all depends on what you're doing. I'm not sold on that Apple Watch, but I I respect it. Let's talk about Amazon. They opened up their second ghost store in Chicago. I I don't even understand this shit. Break it down for me. So Amazon. You know, they're trying to take over the world slowly but surely. And they're doing a pretty fucking good job of it. They are doing a good job. Do you order from Amazon? I don't even watch Netflix anymore. Whoa. That's, I I find Amazon's interface that much better than oh, Netflix. Okay. Oh, you like it better. Yeah, okay. that's what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. Um. So, you know, they bought Whole Foods. Yeah, they so did. So they love, you know, they're getting into like, they're basically scaring everyone. It used to be, remember, everyone used to talk about Walmart. Yeah. Right, like, watch out for Walmart. Yeah. Now, I never hear that. I hear, watch out for Amazon. Because they are taking over everything. They bought that pill company the other day, you know, like the so they're doing like pills now, like uh Oh, that's what's up. Know, 
Yeah. Well, like, you know. Like Hindu dick pills? Because I... <laughs> My connect just it's not fell the through. stuff you're ordering. Oh, all right, okay, just check. These are just the prescription standard right. prescription stuff. Okay, but they're doing that. You know, they're doing they're doing you know delivery. They're do, you know the, you, like you said the movies, the TV shows on the on demand. Now they've got these convenience stores. So they opened up a couple in Seattle. Now they've got their first one outside Seattle. It's in Chicago. And here's the trick about these stores: you walk in with your phone, pick whatever you want off the shelf, and you just walk out. And they use computer vision artificial intelligence and these little thermal sensors to figure out what you took off the shelf charge you as you walk out that's it it's a wrap for humans bro no more cashiers at any of these stores no lines you so, you just know, go in and grab your shit and bail grab grab your stuff get out of there listen, and hey listen to me you cashiers you better start being nice <laughs> I'm telling you, man, motherfuckers like be checking out like like you not replaceable. Like they finna swap you out with a computer, man. So like, well, here's the thing: they first got swapped out with those automated cash registers that were oh, yeah. terrible. Yeah, yeah. So nobody was scared. Screens. Yep, yep. So nobody was like, "Oh, my job's fine," because these things suck. Right. But now those are even getting better. Yeah. You know, remember every time you'd scan something, it'd be like, please place it on the thing. And you're like, I already did. You know, they yep. weigh everything that you. I forgot about those. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But this Amazon, no one thought. See, this is the thing. There's always these smart people that think ahead. Right. Like Amazon's like, no, it's, we're not even going to do the cashier system. Let's just not do it. I mean, you can walk out. So if you go in there with a friend, let's say you and I go in together. Yeah. You've got the phone in your pocket. Whatever I pick off the shelf gets charged to you. <laughs> For real? Yes, yeah, so you got to be careful if you go in with like a friend that I, doesn't have like the Amazon app on their phone. So there's got to be a way to disable that, right? Or maybe the next version. I don't know. Damn, that sounds yeah. sketchy as hell. You got to be careful. What if we both have the app? Then how do you, then how does it know who to charge? I, you know, it's it's figuring it out based on like I said computer vision. So okay. it's like literally tracking you as you pull it off the shelf. Um, and that's it. By the way, the big news today is that Amazon said they're going to open, sources say, they're going to open up to 3,000 of these stores by 2021. So what's, I don't understand. Like, they, they're, they were trying to get people to not go to stores, and now they want to p- get people back in the stores? Well, here's the thing. You got to think about all these stores. Like, uh, think about a, a 7-Eleven, right? right? At its bare bones minimum, you got to have one person in there working right. the register, right? Right, right? It's dangerous. You've got people, you know, they get held up, whatever. This is, you don't have to think about any of that stuff. You know, if, if someone goes in there, and there's no one in there, they take a bunch of stuff, whatever, it's a little loss. Right. But you're not, you just don't have the people. You don't have to manage schedules. You don't have to train people every Every week to, you know, how do you do this? So there will be security to stop motherfuckers just running up in there. No. They don't care? They I don't care if I, you steal all this I shit? I mean, I think they would care, but it's, I mean, who's going to prosecute you for a couple dollars of water? I don't know. I mean, I don't know how they're going to handle that. Uh, bro. And, That's pretty crazy. Yo, like in Hawaii right now, like all these meth heads are stealing spam and shit like that oh they like spam in hawaii yeah those so like they sell they're selling like black market spam so you, who knows like you might go up in there and just steal a bunch of what would be like razors because they're small yeah. and, and you, you yeah can those resell. are expensive yeah the bitch is expensive it's you like can 20 run, bucks for yeah right run two. Up, right, 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 and then just fucking jet up out of there well, if you think of those, the, you've seen on TV, like all those Apple store robberies. Yeah. Because yeah. the Apple store is the same thing. Everything's just kind of sitting there. Yeah, they've got them on those like cords. But right, you just right. Pop them off. And, you know, what are you, what are you going to do? Yeah. I mean, it's, but you can't really use that stuff once. By the way, you steal an iPhone, you can't really use it. It doesn't work when it's not, when it's stolen. You can't jailbreak that bitch? Uh, I mean, I don't think so. Uh, you might be able to. We got a, we got a couple of people uh, calling about the the Apple shit. Matt in Atlanta, go ahead, Matt. Yes, sir. Hey, um, I just want to throw in my two cents. You know, there are certain things that I believe as a police officer, but first and foremost, I'm a citizen, and I I think it's great. I think for older people with that fall, but the issue arises is the Supreme Court doesn't perceive third party calls as a reliable source. So here's the scenario, for example. You're drunk, you're a drug dealer, or, you know, you just like the party. You're drunk, you fall over, and you pass out. Next thing you know, a third party's calling police, dispatching them to your house. The Fourth Amendment doesn't cover, which is a legal search and seizure, doesn't cover anonymous third-party calls, which would be the Apple company. So would it be a violation of your Fourth Amendment rights if the cops go there based off a third-party call, find a, an, you know, an ounce of Coke on your kitchen table? Can they seize it? Can they arrest you? 
Or another thing that's really kind of setting police up on edge is why we don't like these at all is say you are drunk and you fall over and pass out, hit your head, and you're in a bad neighborhood. And now the cops are dispatched to your house because, you know, again, Apple called the police. Well, you wake up from a, you know, a drunken stumber. You think people are breaking into your house. You get your gun and now you have a shooting match and the shoot and the police and you get in a shootout. Who's responsible? Did we even have a legal reason to be there in the first place? You're just defending your house. You, you didn't you don't ask know what's for going police on. assistance. Yeah, you didn't ask for police assistance. And at, at the end of the day, police don't like it because we're damned if we're due, damned if we're don't. You know, heaven forbid you go there. You know, we, we don't go to one of those calls. And it ends up that, yeah, you didn't fall and hit your head and crack and, and you bled out in your bathroom. And then we're fucked. I'm agreeing with him on this shit, dude. Like, because I just don't want cops showing up in my fucking house. Oh, but, I agree with that. I mean, yeah. police, and don't get me wrong, it's what I do for pay. I do it 40 hours a week, but I love my privacy. And that's the issue is that the Supreme Court hasn't caught up with technology. Let, and let me, police let me, department's policies haven't caught up with the technology. So, let, so, I mean, let me jump in. Let me jump in. Would, would you be agreeing, like, if you... By turning, perhaps they have the paperwork on there. By turning on this thing, you are agreeing to certain, to waiving certain rights or some shit. And 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 if so, is that are you allowed to do that on the phone? Yeah, like when you I, if, when you if, sign if, in. When I sign in yeah. on my little Apple Watch, if I knock out, right. it's cool for the cops to come get me. Am I am I giving away those rights by doing that? I mean, I think you you. By calling nine one one from your device, you're asking for help. But that's but I'm not calling nine one one. That's the whole point. That's that well, was what Mass Point was too. But here's the thing. I mean, this is just one piece of technology, and this is we're in you know 2018. Right. This is just the beginning. I mean, look at we already have these things in our homes, these Alexas and these you know uh, Google Homes that are all voice activated. What about when those start responding to screams inside the house? Screams for help. Not you know if it if it hears the 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 hot word that activates it, you don't think those things are soon going to be tuned to when Google says, "Hey, we have an algorithm for figuring out when people are in dire straits and need some help," and God, they're going to start just awful. calling for help. Every time you come and talk to me, I get really depressed. Well, this is I mean these are the things that were written about years ago, where it's like you know our society, the technology, privacy, and technology. Is, don't mix. Is, they just go like this. They're yeah. just button heads because in a in a perfect tech world there is no privacy, and in a perfect privacy world there's no tech. That's yeah, and we and like look man, you got a whole group of people that is born born like they was four or five years old when nine eleven happened. They don't even remember privacy. Yeah, they don't even they don't even they're like totally cool with giving away all this information and shit and. Anything. My sister the other day posted to Instagram her kid's, you know, iMessage account. And I'm like, what? Anyone could just iMessage him. Yeah. And she's like, eh, I don't care. <laughs> well, that's all right. <laughs> He's a cute kid. He's a cute kid. And it'll send him a message. I mean, it only takes one, you know, crazy person. But the reality is that there is there is no privacy to the next, the upcoming generation. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you talk to, you know, you present any of this stuff to your grandparents, whatever. They kind of laugh. They think it's kind of interesting. But the implications just continue to grow for for all this privacy stuff. I'm rolling, with, dude. I'm rolling with Matt on that one. Hey, Matt, thank you for thank you for your service. Do me a favor. Yeah. Yes, sir. Let some asshole off for for the all out show that when you if you pull someone over just let one let one of them, let one of them go for all out show be like you got it you got it dude anything my man anything to y'all i appreciate all right, you bye all right all right let's fuck anytime anytime we can get a ticket waved yeah i'm, I'm all for that you like okay. the, i like that we get well, we got the, like, the we, people there we got a lot of cops that listen to us, so it's like I fuck with the cops and the cop and we got cool ass cop. They cool to them. yeah, they cool as hell. They see me in the uh it walking through the airport and leave me alone, so we good. <laughs> That's like, good. <laughs> <laughs> I could have a case. Um the dog, all right, let's get we got one more of these and then I gotta get uh then then we got two short coming up. All right, uh eight 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 seven four two three three four five. Um, someone else is pushing back on the medical shit. James, go ahead. James. Yeah, what's up, brother? How you doing? Good, man. You got Rich DeMiro. 
Love the show. Love the show. So, listen, I just want to touch on a couple of things, uh, if I may. First of all, the copy you were just talking to, ooh, I don't know where he's working at. So, um, implied consent. Implied consent is when you're incapacitated and first responders, uh, as a first responder, we have what's called implied consent. We believe that you want help, so we help you. I never heard of a third party because we do wellness checks all the time. Third parties call us up all the time and say, go check on my mom, go check on my neighbor, go check on my my uncle, go check on my, my friend. So I guess what no he's thing. saying so is it gets into a gray way area way. because uh, it's not it's no longer a person being a third party. It is a, it's a right, it's like an, a, an computer, algorithm yeah. or some shit. I guess that's what he was saying. Right. All right so I mean, what were you going to say another, on the medical thing? Issue, I can tell you another issue we're experiencing now with these with all these devices you, you on once on one step on one phase of it you get the hypochondriac that's constantly calling us saying my device my my watch my my automatic uh my 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 EKG at home is telling me that you know I'm having a heart attack well first of all if you're having a heart attack you know you you know it because you wouldn't be able to call me but um on the other hand I'll tell you there's a downfall of all this technology because taking an EKG uh, electrocardiogram of someone it's very complex you have to stay still. There's 12 leads. There's nah, it's easy. You just do it a watch, bro. You didn't hear? Just tap your finger to the this side watch, of the this watch, <laughs> digital this crown. Watch I'm telling you, this watch James, you're not even listening, bro. All you do is just finger fuck the watch, man, and then boom, it tells you. <laughs> no, I got the brother, but you know what? <laughs> you get the people out there that are having a heart attack, and they go, well, my watch says I'm not having a heart attack. And they end up dead. And then you get the morons out there that are not having a heart attack. And they go, my watch is telling me my heart ain't, ain't beating right. And they're calling every resource in their community or wherever they live. And they got all kind of first responders coming out for nothing. Well, James, so the I, technology really isn't all that. Well, it's, you know, but, I don't want to put down Apple. No, well, yeah, we Apple. can put down Apple. But down. I think I think Rich's point is, is it's going there. It's that, all going to be there. It's I getting mean, there. It's it's And this is just the one, you know, one finger tap. But the next version will have more. I mean, it's gonna, you know, it's Can gonna you just like I know you cool with them Apple motherfuckers. Just throw out the whole little fucking. I like the STD thing. Yeah, the hip shit, yeah. all of that. Just be like, <laughs> yeah. Or I, if you if you can scan like with a do like a like a wave of like a wine and okay. see if they got herpes on their shit. That's okay. They might have to change the the light on there. Whatever. You know, add yeah, yeah. like a. Like a new light, put like a black light. Yeah, like on a little black shit. light. How you could check for sperm on on <laughs> on on hotel sheets? Oh man, yeah. You don't want to. Don't ever bring a black light into a hotel room. <laughs> it's bad news, <laughs> Rich. Man, you got to come back when we got a full hour. I feel like every time you're you're here, we're pressed for fucking time. It was great. Thank you so much. Hey, let me, you could you could watch Rich on KTLA if you're in Los Angeles, or you could follow him. Rich Demero, D E M U R O, and you got the you got the fucking book, 101 handy tech tips for the iPhone, and the website, and Rich, the RichOnTech.tv. My man, crushing them. Thank you, thank you, Rich. Appreciate you, bro. Thanks for having me. You are checking out the All Out Show with Rude Jude on demand. Say 45. I got two short here. What's up, man? What's up? What's up? It's good to see you. Still rapping. Fucking! I was just looking at your wiki, man. You had shit. I didn't even know that. I didn't even. I didn't even know you was dropping shit in motherfucking eighty three, bro. Like, yeah, man. Well, I, um, I had this this uh this thing that was in my head when I first started rapping, and it just kept saying, "Don't stop rapping! Don't stop rapping!" The first time they ever asked me what I wanted to name my album, I named it "Don't Stop Rapping," and I've been like. In the back of my mind, I'm like, you just can't stop rapping. It's like, it's really like an addiction, but at the same time, it's a mission, <laughs> you know? I, you might be, have you checked in the Guinness Book of World Records? Are you the longest, are you the longest active rapper? Uh, I don't even want to play with that stat, man, cause you know, what, what's, is, is active like you in the basement still making demos? I don't know, what's, what's active? You, I don't well, know. Well, you but, got some shit from 83 and you all the way to now, so like, that's pretty, yeah, you, it, that's, I don't think anybody's been like trying to put out records like, that's a long ass fucking time, yeah, and it's you, consistent. But you got rappers like, uh, Fat Joe and E40 that's, that keep it pushing, you know? 
Yeah, but even E40 but they, didn't have a yeah, record they, in that. Yeah, they didn't start as early as I did. That's though. what I'm screaming. Yeah, I'm the OG, man. It's like, um, you know, I feel like uh, what I'm doing, a lot of rappers have the intention of doing the same thing yeah. as we speak. And that's like not being uh, given an expiration date or being told you got to stop when you turn 50. You got to stop at a certain age or, or after a certain achievement or something. So it's like, when is Jay-Z going to stop? When is, you know? No, it's a, it's the truth. It, it, and I, I felt like there was like a, a little spot in time when like the older statesmen of rap weren't getting the respect that they deserved, but mm-hmm. then they just kept going. And now I feel like it's, it's the spirit they, of hip hop. Yeah, though. they get that shit. Like it's the same thing with the OGs saying, "I don't like this new rap with the youngsters." Right. And the youngsters going, "Well, get your old ass out the way." It's the same thing. You can't control hip hop. You cannot. Pick your favorite kind of hip hop and just wish that oh this is the only kind I like. Right. Everybody else is doing what they want to do. Hip hip hop's a motherfucker, man. It's like I love this shit because you can't. Right now, I really like it right now because you can sit in front of a computer. You can sit in your own little world. Yeah. YouTube YouTuber style. Yeah. And become a star without a label, without any know how. You can just do something quirky or something dope on the internet and then the music could be good like, it doesn't even matter if the music is good if they like to see it if they laugh at you if they love you whatever you could be famous instantly yeah the 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 level of sophistication that these teenagers have on marketing on online marketing is fucking they they were born into this shit you know what i mean like i had to like learn it they they're trolling at a level i've never seen yeah your kid could literally Sit in their room, become popular, start a business, make money, and you wouldn't even know. <laughs> no, you're fucking right. Yeah. <laughs> like, my son has $80,000 in the bank. How? Yeah, he's cashing out on Cash App and shit. Meanwhile, like you're in the, in the living room struggling. <laughs> like a motherfucker. <laughs> What do you do you do do you work do you work with the new rappers like uh forties forties famous for that. He 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 oh, yeah. catches a new rapper and he like he hops on and Yeah, you gotta you really gotta stay in touch with the, the new cause that's what keeps you fresh. You know, you even just being around some of the young upcoming rappers or young established rappers and just catching the vibe, it keeps you where you need to be. You know what I'm saying? I'm never gonna try to imitate what's new or try to catch the new wave, right. but at the same time, I'd like to know what whack is. Yeah. But, you know, t- in in the eyes of the youth, I'd like to know because I don't want to be it. You know. But to me, you you have one of the most consistent. You you like you have one of the most consistent sounds. Like there's a too short sound that I just know. Like I know it. Fucking, and I, I in think the trunk. Like I know it. Yeah, I think I actually have a sound. This funky little too short sound, but at the right. same time. I'm constantly in the mix. I right. stay going to different type of clubs and stuff. And right. I've been doing it for years and I've been knowing what makes a girl get out her chair and shake her butt a little bit or what, you know, just, just emotions of songs, man. I've been knowing how to make songs. And I think that the combination of having an established sound and knowing what that is, being hands on like I am. And then on top of that, kind of keeping an ear to the streets and what's hot and what's not, you know, then I can, I can, I can ride the trends a little bit, but I don't have to compromise the authenticity of Too Short at all. There, yeah, I was just at the Porn Awards uh, after party, and uh, Blow the Whistle came on, and I was very happy about that <laughs> shit. That's a weird song, man. It's like a weird thing where... I, I wanted to ask you about that song, mm-hmm. because I don't know, like, I can't tell if you're happy or you're not happy that everybody's yelling bitch. No, actually, well, it was getting out of hand. Before I made the song. All right, break it down for me. Before I made Blow the Whistle, there were these debates going on. Yeah. And some of the debates were like, oh, well, Too Short got it from Snoop Dogg. Oh, you know, so-and-so. It started off. Too Short uh, got it from Snoop Dogg. Ice Cube. It was different debates because you got to depend on who the rap fan is and where you know rap, you know? Yeah, yeah. So it wasn't even just Snoop, man. It was just like people had no idea. It was a lot of people who were like didn't know that it just came from me. And a lot of people did know. Right. And I just figured, let me just say something. Let me just take ownership officially. And you pick, you know, I picked perfect. I picked that hot record to make that statement because I'm like, can't just make the statement on a B on a B side record. Right. You got to make it on a a single. So I just stepped up and was like, you know, just I just kind of kind of told everybody, you know, you know, that's mine. And basically, um, I say it's a weird record because the record was recorded in 05 and released in 06. 
when it came out, I was on Jive Records and Jive Records, you know, like like they do sometimes, they immediately call and go, oh shit, this is a fucking smash. Mm-hmm. And then they go into the dance of like, let's make this record big. So we started to dance and they right. felt they felt the vibe. It was a Too Short Lil John collaboration. We did many before that that did really good. They knew all about it and we started off in San Diego on a little promo run like you're supposed to send the artist out back then. And we hit the West Coast. We went all the cities from um, San Diego to like Se- Seattle, yeah. up that way. And they were like, okay, now we're going to hit the um, the Midwest, you know, run. And it just stopped. And I'm calling over there. Now, we're talking about Jive Records. I don't know if you heard the stories about Jive Records from rappers no, t- after after they signed um, Britney and and Backstreet, and then they acquired NSYNC. They had the Justin Timberlake solo run. After they really got the... the Once they got to pop, did they really abandon the rappers? They just would say the stupidest shit like, well, you know, it's not in the budget. Like, have you been watching your uh, bank account lately? Right, right. (laughs) You got Britney money. It's it's, It's not in your budget. (laughs) Yeah, so (laughs) I I, I remember one time a a Jive exec told me, uh, he said, man, we're getting back in the rap game. I'm like, when did the fuck did y'all get out? Like Straight up. I didn't even know you guys got out the rap game to get back in it. So, And the worst part about it is they use that Jive shit to get, like, to get these pop acts a bit of of credibility. So I I have uh, conspiracy theories that I, you know, things that I've learned in the industry and I just see labels don't like, it's like relationships. They don't want you to be popping when y'all break up. Yeah. And whether you know it or not, it appears to be that, that somebody in some department over there really strategically tries to dwindle your status as you, as your exit is approaching. And you know, you can actually 40 jive really backed up away from us yeah. and we were giving them hot records and we were like you know probably latter in our career 30s yeah, yeah. late 30s and they're like you know it's all about justin timberlake or something like that they were even like you know playing uh r kelly to the left a little bit like just on budgets right and how big his budgets used to be and then r kelly you know in the end right like a little bit before the scandals and stuff came out they they were you know just the r&b and hip-hop over there just the money dried up so blow the whistle gets a West Coast look, and it's done. This is 2006. It's done. There's no more money ever spent on this record to promote it. There's no radio, nothing. But then I'm too short, and I've been around the country a hundred times, and I've mixed and mingled with program directors and yeah, you know and a little bit. You was club sweet. DJ. So yeah. I, I was like, you know what? I know what the record's doing. It's blowing up on the West Coast. I'm like, this ain't cool what they're doing. So I personally put the word out to the promoters, radio stations, hey, if you fly me in, I'll come do a free show. Just, just get a record spin. So I was working it like that. And it was, it was going from market to market, getting picked up a little bit. I'm, I'm working the club DJs the same way. You know, just bring, bring me in. I did throw, throw you a little half price love or something. Just blow the record right. up. And I just worked it. And, and like, uh, it was, it was hitting the little cities. It was just moving little by little. No, lo- no love from the label. Zero support ever. And then Jay Z got mad at uh, some basketball player during the playoffs or something. Somebody was, remember Jay-Z wanted to yeah. do LeBron to come to the yeah, yeah. The, the Nets when yeah. they were getting ready to move to Brooklyn. Yeah. And he got mad at somebody for saying something bad about LeBron. And he called me and he's like, I need the instrumental to blow the whistle. And I sent it to him and he, uh, he did that, that verse where he's just like shitting on old boy about fucking with LeBron. And that, made the record like I don't even know what year that was but it just it was like a new record all over again it blew and it started playing all up and down the east coast and fortunately you know how the east coast could be they'll play the Jay-Z version and then yeah. just end that motherfucker which probably happened a lot but yeah. a lot of DJs let my, one of my verses play too so people would start hitting me from all over the place they're like man that, that new record blow the whistle I'm like this shit is like seven years old Like, but I was uh, my little cousins called me one day from New Orleans and they in a heated argument with somebody who's like this is a brand new race is new my cousin's like my cousin put this record out years ago and I had to get on the phone and say, no, I came out in 06. It was, people would just think that it's a and brand I said new bitch first. Yeah. And I, now I got these old ladies, these really old ladies that are like grandmas walking around wearing whistles 24 seven. Stop. They're like, I don't never take my whistle off anywhere I go. I make them play that record. And they literally, I, I you know, that's the, gangster. Yes. It's kind of a dirty song. I don't know what it does for these old ladies, but you, hey, I don't know. Blow the whistle. When I look at old ladies, I don't think of old ladies. I, I, be, I be like, they know their way around some dick. <laughs> they know their way around some dick. Yeah. I don't Experience. got you. I don't got you for long. What, and speaking of like the, you know, the, 
just being an OG in this game and and uh, dealing with younger rappers. What what was your take on the whole on the Eminem and the MGK? Well, you, I feel like uh, M was a great hip hop personality, to even indulge in it. You know, yeah. Even though he's definitely an instigator, yeah. From day one, he loves to to fuck with people. So uh, he got him. He got he got that dude. You know, got him pissed off and shit. And probably you know, it's this thing I've been noticing all the white rappers picking on each other. Yeah, they like fucking it's, with each other. So it's it's, white on white crime. I wish they would stop. <laughs> I swear. I wish they would stop. <laughs> so, so you know, everybody's throwing little jabs and shit, wordplay, and it's, it's it's dope as fuck. And then for, um, you know, because we look at him in the, he's like the birth of the white rapper um, being, you know, authentic, just being like, you know, really like, oh, he's the truth. Yeah. Because all the white rappers before him, they kind of, you know, had hit records and nobody got that Eminem respect. Yeah, because them had bars. So then M gave birth to all these rappers who could rap all these, you know, the Mac Millers and all these these rappers with bars. Right. From anywhere. And they just, you know, I feel like Eminem was the, the initial spark, the inspiration. For like, you got bars, spit them bars. Yeah. Like, it probably was guys out there with bars but before him, but he was the one. And for him to get dissed so thoroughly by MGK and then just, I mean, he didn't, he didn't even take a deep breath. He just... It's just like he just like put him over his knee and just spanked him. Like I, yeah. I'm like, what the hell was that? It was. It's like I don't even know. I do would even want to battle Eminem. Like he's got he's got so many angles. What do we thought you were gonna do? You, were you gonna wordplay him out and, and destroy his career? What were you gonna do? This guy makes festival anthems at at just the drop of a dime. Like I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah, that's that was my. It was like, yo, bro, he he did he. He killed him by attacking a song. Like you don't even want him to but, attack you, bro. Like he he, so look, he didn't even get at let's just you think, yet. Let's just consider what could have happened. Yeah. So he made a hip hop song about you, where he dropped bars on you. He could have made a fucking anthem on your ass, like like some yeah, like brought in one of those little pop singers <laughs> <laughs> and had the whole festival singing about MGK. That's a good thing, though, man. I love it for hip hop. I love that he did it. You know, I wouldn't have did what M did. I probably would have uh, just let it slide. No, I probably would have just waited till you see the cat and then, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <You know? laughs> I don't like to fight. Me neither. I'm like, you know, I'm like, I'm like E40, man. Just, just nod your head and shit happens. Grandma in Orlando want to holler at you. She, she might have one of them whistles. Grandma. Hey, dude. What's up? You got too short. Too short. How you doing, baby? I'm a long time fan from Don't Stop the Rapping to Don't Stop the Feeling to to album number 10, made tapes every day, me and Freddie B, man, famous since 1983. She's on point. I, no, she's I'm a blow the whistle, baby. <laughs> <laughs> blow the whistle. I told you, man. They blowing that whistle, man. It's, a, it's, it's the song that won't go away. I love it, man. It won't God go away. Show. She know my first you, and baby. last name. Yeah. Love you, baby. All right. Thank you. Peace. Is that your favorite shit? Is is blow is blow the whistle? Is blow the whistle one of your favorite songs? It's definitely a favorite for a performing. It's definitely like one on my list of like favorite two short songs. Even without the success of it, it's just a great song. But um, it's probably like um, it it it's the reason why a lot of money came my way later in my career. Like literally, I would do um. I could I could just like stop doing everything too short and only do blow the whistle like a fucking like you could be on a 90s tour and just go do blow the whistle <laughs> or whatever however they would do that shit or a 2000s tour and just go do blow the whistle blow the whistle every blow the whistle. club of every ethnicity everything everywhere on this earth I could just go around and do blow the whistle for the rest of life and just I'd be the blow the whistle guy and that that's how dope that record is for me you've rapped with everybody too huh yeah I I took a point uh, when I was younger, I made a point of uh, of just being open for collaborations, man. I, I realized at some point in my career that a lot of my songs weren't collaborations, and I wasn't really like I had a in, I had a crew of you know in house producers and musicians that I just we just did us. And you know, one of my favorite, co I got a couple, I got two, a couple favorite collabs off the top of my head. One of them is Biggie. Nope. We, what is what? It's uh fucking buy you some with Eric Sermon. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, that's dope. That's one of the ones. That was that was a, a 
just an instant song. We didn't even here. I'll pull, I'll pull up. I'll pull up. We didn't even work on that song. We just made it. Like the drummer really was playing the drums. The bass player was really playing the bass. Eric Sermon freestyled his verse, and then I just wrote a little something to follow up. It was just done in minutes. For real. It was done in minutes. Is that how it goes sometimes? Where it's just like, it where it's just like, if if you don't overwork it, it's better. Yeah, it, it really is, man. Listen to it. It's a drummer. And that's a live drummer right there? Yeah, and the, that's not a guitar playing. That's a bass guitar. He's no playing shit. chords. He's, he's, he's playing chords on the bass. Now introducing the sound from and he mixed a little guitar in there too. too short. What, what the fuck you thought? And this is like '96, right? Like right in the hot, right in the '94, five, somewhere around the years. All right, let's get to your part. Eric Sarver, Ronald was short. Yeah, this is the good clean remix right here. Yeah, you work with Breed too. That was my guy, man. That's like my homie, homie. You know, as a Michigan dude, man, Breed like. Yeah, he put he put Michigan on the map. I I put I still think that's like one of the best rap songs ever. Fucking, fucking. do you remember that MC Breed? Uh, Ain't no future in your front and art, artwork. No, I ain't even. He's just like standing up by some fence or something. Oh like. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the, like, yeah, we was just driving down the street. Like, stop, let's shoot the album cover. <laughs> that was the album cover. Of that shit. <laughs> Pull up right here by that fence. And then here was my other. This is my other. Uh, Shout out to Flint. Here's 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 another one of my favorites. And you can tell me a bit about this one right here. Okay, yeah, that's a That would be the song that I got kidnapped for. <laughs> you got kidnapped? Wait, hold up. <laughs> Scarface, T Lift, Too that's Short, how, having hey, a dude. That's how it works, man. I, I, I was doing a show, it's probably um you know, middle of the night, two, three in the morning, show's over. Yeah. And you know the 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 big guys come over, they like they're like, yeah, little Jay, little Jay, once you come to the studio, you know, usually after the show, you're trying to fuck something. Yeah. I'm like, uh, tomorrow? He's like, no, nah, he wants you to come to the studio right now. Like, whenever these guys would come over and get you, like, yeah, little Jay over on the other side of the club, he want to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> so you go over and say, what's up to Jay, you know? Yeah. And it, it was a big deal, you know? What's up, yeah. Jay? If Jay show you some love, you in Houston. Yeah. It, that was a yeah. big deal. So if Jay said, come to the studio. All right, you finna go to the studio. I got to tell my little, my little late night freak, um, Maybe next time go Head to the studio right The irony is that The song is called Fuck Faces And you didn't get No pussy that night I really didn't Cause we went <laughs> I got to the studio Probably 4 in the morning We stayed like 6, 7 Working on this song They had already been Working on it And it was already like It was like a hit Like Yeah Like you making this song Yeah You got Devin in there Doing the hook Yeah And Face already did his verse And Tila's up in there Everybody's hot Yeah They like Go get too short He in town Go get him So it was like one of them th- I was happy that they came And got that, him That's That That I, that I'd, I'd feel but honored. Let me, let me let me redeem rap a lot, Lil J, Scarface, everybody. Because when we shot the video, they put this little bitch in my lap for my scene. Yeah, I fucked her a lot after that. <laughs> <laughs> I fucked her like a lot. I used to fly her places. I fucked her a lot. So they got back. It was like it all came around. It was months later, but still, it balanced out. Sure, it's it's always good chopping up, <laughs> man. All right, you got the new video out. Do we got the song? Is it is it ready to go? All right, you gotta go over to Jason Ellis. Uh, if you guys want to hear more, too short. He he's running over to Jason Ellis from here. The Pimp Tape is a studio album. Ain't my girlfriend is the single. Yeah, the video is kind of funny, man. I, I didn't want to um, do a typical video with uh, all the, all the features and stuff. We all just stand there singing to the camera. So yeah, just something funny, man. All right, let me. I'm gonna watch that shit. Too short. Is what is it? Too short on everything. Are you are you on? Are you on social media? Oh yeah, T O O S H O R T. I got it all out there. Too short on everything. Yep. Bad motherfucker. Verified. Let's go. Buckle up, sweetie. Remember, safety first. Hey, Dad, can you play that new Too Short? Fuck yeah, I can. (laughs) Turn that shit up. Still my bitch. Save forty five. Shout out to Short. All right. Um, that was yeah we. You gotta go watch that video, <laughs> guys. You, I'm not gonna tell you anything. I'm not, I'm not, go please, could you go back to that thing, please? Um, I'm not gonna give you any hints or anything, but just please go watch that too short, ain't my girlfriend video. I was, I was not ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was not ready for that. They killed that video. And you know, I don't be co-signing shit tough, so 
there you go. That was some fucking and to the side. Uh, kill shots at eighty three million views in like three. What is it? Three days? Four days? Three or four? What is it? Three days? No, Monday. It's Wednesday now. He dropped him on like the fourteenth, right? Dink. Yeah, dropped on the 14th. And what's this? The 17th? 19th. Five days? Five days. 83 million views. God damn. Killed him. Dead. And, yo, and I don't know if you look, but even if he does come out, come back, you can't. Don't even come back. He's open up for, MGK is open up for Fallout Boy. <laughs> like you can't be in a rap battle with somebody opening up for Fallout Boy. It's like jab jab, but we can't have like <laughs> we can't have a six song rap battle. He, like he 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 literally like Fallout Boys eating bananas, waiting for him to get done. Be... Nah, <laughs> nah. All right, man. Let's play some music. Come on back. You are checking out the All Out Show with Rude Jude on demand. What up, though, man? You were listening to the All Out Show. Did you miss any of the show? There's so much going on. I'm at war with. I'm at war with India. I went to war with India. Just part of it, and then uh over dick pills and we I just lined up a, a sex doll that I'm gonna try out and John's gonna smash after me <laughs> John you get my sloppy seconds on the sex doll that was just the first break that was just the first break go to uh what is it series.com forward slash on demand and listen there and then if you wanna follow the show you can follow at all out show that is a public pl- page and a private page is at one more jude and then if you want to follow my backup because i'm always getting flagged go angelini dot jude a-n-g-e-l-i-n-i dot jude i know it's hard but like everybody else took like all my fucking names so there it is all right we're gonna play some music and come back with the news You are checking out the All Out Show with Rude Jude on demand. And now, it's time for News from the Tin with John Z. Matthews. I have a list here of seven things that you should never talk about at work. This is according to the Huffington Post. It's probably like old school shit that you shouldn't talk about like at dinner, like religion and politics. That's on here. Your political views, that's a big one. It's number two. Hmm. So maybe you shouldn't have MSNBC running all the fucking time. That is what's really going on. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, John. It is. Yeah, John. All right. But I I don't engage in debates in the office about it, but uh, hey, if you want the truth, I've got the view. (laughs) Bro, you're such a clown. You're just a clone, bro. It's not one of these days when you have an original thought. I'm, it's gonna fuck me up. What do you want me to put on TV? A game show? Put on fucking ESPN or goddamn fucking Cartoon Network or don't have the TV on. Why is it? Why is the TV on? Shouldn't you? Shouldn't you be fucking working? In case something happens, John. I, I see never. It you have never. You've never reported on anything that's ever happened. On the show. There's never been anything where you're like, I saw that on TV just now. I got to tell Jude about it. Perhaps there was a rocket launch I learned about. That may have happened. But beyond that, not really. It's MSNBC. They're just doing the damn political shit all day. I, no <laughs> shit. It's a fucking, it's depressing. <laughs> Every time I look up, it's like somebody's, somebody's booty got tickled or some shit like that. It's like, fuck it. Like, can we stop already? <laughs> People do like the ESPN, though. They yeah, people like everything, but, like, you bum out the office. Nobody in the office likes that except for you. 
the lady I sit next to got upset initially, and we sort of worked it out. Nobody, she, she, she walk up and turn it off like you did. Yeah, because fuck that shit, bro. Like, that shit is a bummer. Like, we were trying, cask, like, you come in here, you're trying to have a good day, you're trying to put on a good show, like, we're trying to keep it lighthearted. Are, are you on a political channel? No. Then shut the fuck up with that fucking shit, bro. <laughs> I need you're to- not on a political channel, man. Like, stop. What if something happens? Nothing ever fucking happens. I'll know if it does. Dog, so many times shit has happened, and we, we find out about it 10 minutes later on Twitter. It's never fucking happened. A couple times a caller tipped me off. That's what I'm saying, bro. All You ruining the mood in the office is not worth it. You can look away. You can look Motherfucker, away. Motherfucker, you can't you look, can away. look away. It's a giant fucking screen, bro. It's a giant fucking screen. It's like fucking 42 inches <laughs> of propaganda. It's 42 inches of fucking just propaganda smashed on there. It's close to the truth. It is. Yeah, you're right, man. <laughs> you're totally right. Yeah, news agencies—they're not owned by bigger conglomerates. They fucking—they tell you exact. They tell you everything. I don't know where else to look. And they don't omit other other news stories <laughs> to help fucking to help to help uh, create a narrative that they that they're trying to push. What nope, are we gonna watch? Not at all. Russia Fuck, today. Shit, watch fucking watch. Dude, just as long as it's not that or the fucking view, we're fucking, I'm golden, bro. What do you want me to watch? Nothing, bro. I want you to do your fucking work. In the back of my mind, I'm quite seriously concerned that I'll miss something that happens in the world. John, that's your problem, bro. Like, look at you. Like, 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 let's really stop. Kill the music. Let's really stop and break this shit down. Mm hmm. You're a fucking loser, dog. What the fuck are Depends you gonna who you do? Talk to. What the fuck are you gonna do, I'll bro? Know what, I'll know what's happening. And I'll what are a... you gonna do? What's gonna happen in this world? Like, what? What are you gonna do? I'll have a chance to act. Like, get the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like, let's say North Korea wilds out. What you gonna do? Go get your yoga mat, and then, and then what? And then what? What are you gonna do? Figure go get it your out. fucking beat up avocado shoes and go for a hike. It don't matter. Well, like, whatever happens, you can't do shit. But I'll know it's I'll know it's coming. I'll make yeah. some calls. Uh, what calls are you gonna make, John? Ain't no one gonna ask <laughs> what your phone sex girl? Like who you gonna call, man? I just might. That's what I'm saying, bro. Like you be watching the news, like you like you got a fucking hand in this shit. Like you fin- like you finna do something. What try to ignore it? Just forget about it? Yeah. Why? It makes you happier. I've read that. I yo, I stopped watching the news a long time ago and became much happier. I'm much happier. There's something to that. Fuck yeah. I'm starting to believe it. No, it's the fucking truth, dog. That's why our news stories are fucking like lighthearted, fucking just bullshit shit talking, man. And I guarantee, and all of y'all, whatever news channel you're watching, you're not seeing the full news. That's, that's the other thing. You're so cynical. It's not, I'm not cynical. I'm fucking real. Cause I look at fucking, I, I, Cause I follow everybody and everybody's luck has their own little fucking story they want to tell. And I look at one thing and then I go double check another thing and then I go double check another thing. And then one thing's not being covered at all. Another thing's being covered heavily. It's just fucking. It's just bullshit, dude. Yeah. Don't talk about news in the office, John. <laughs> your fucking MSNBC. I was like, man, I'm tired of your CNN. So what does he do? MSNBC. It's not a compromise. <laughs> That's not a compromise. Also, Put on PBS or some shit. Uh, not at this hour. There's nothing on. How much? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but also, you shouldn't talk about how much you hated your last job. That's a bad sign. How much you hated your last job? That's oh yeah. That's like going on a date, shitting on your ex. This one seems obvious. Uh, how the job hunt is going? That you're looking for another job. Oh, if you like looking for another job, yeah, that seems a little bizarre. <laughs> yeah, I'd be. Yeah, I do that shit here. I'd be like, yeah, I had another meeting, but it's never like I'm not gonna leave here. It's just I'm trying to. I'm just trying to stack. Just trying to stack, stack, stack. You violate this one all the time. Medical issues. Should yep. we talk about that? I know. I know. I should have just took a. Uh, Eight months, six sick leave. (laughs) (laughs) 
Hey, someone told me that the psychic, the psychic came on, the gay psychic came on and told me I was going to have a fucked up stomach in January. What? If you, yeah. In we January. Should, we should see that. Shit. I don't remember the gay psychic at all, but someone was like, you, someone said that shit on the IG live. Male? Gay psychic? Yeah. All right. Oh, I really don't remember that. Yeah. And, hey, bro, sorry about talking about my medical issues. I literally fucking came in here looking decrepit every fucking day. And people would be like, damn, what's up, man? You good? Yeah, I'm fucking, yeah, I'm great. But the problem is people just don't know how to react or respond in a work environment. It sucks. Makes them uncomfortable. Yeah, so, yeah. Sickness makes people uncomfortable. Are you sick shaming me, bro? I'm just, just telling you what's up. I'm 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 surprised Huff Post would say some shit like that. They're 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 all about fucking. They don't like body shaming and shit, but sick shaming is fine. Someone told me about their medical condition recently, and I said, and it sounded pretty serious. Like, whoa, good luck with that. Yo, like, look, man, yeah. Or people just be like, hey, how you doing? And I'm like, yo, I'm all right. <laughs> I don't be like, I don't be like, I laid in bed all day. And then drug, drug my ass to work, fucking powered through the show, went home and laid in pain <laughs> until it got late enough for me to go to sleep and then had a non-restful night. And I've been doing that for the last eight months. I, I've never said that until just now because it's uncomfortable. I guess. I don't know. To who? I mean, all right. The one thing I did mention a moment ago, that was slightly uncomfortable. I was concerned. I was like, whoa, are you all right? But I mean, I wasn't uncomfortable with this lady. But, yeah, oh, that's, I don't, I'd uh, be like, damn, that's fucked up. Because yeah. it is. I'd just be like, shit, man. That's fucked up, man. I hope you get better. Yeah. What are you going to do? Sickness is just part of life. What else, should, should, what else should I, I can't believe I'm taking fucking directions from Huffington Post. What else should I not talk about according to Huffington Post? Intimate details about your personal relationships. John. <laughs> this is tough because, look, man, we do a radio show. Like, that's what you do. Like, you come on here and you talk about your fucking life. You talk about how you was paying all your girls rent and sleeping on the couch or, or you'd sleep next to her and jerk off next to her and not fuck. Yeah, but that's in here. Out by the desk, we don't do that. Some other people do. And I should add to this list, don't make jokes about whores, which they do at the desk, and some ladies got upset recently. They was making jokes about whores? I was like, guys, yeah. Like, X-Men on the whore haze. <laughs> I was like, whoa. Dude. Yo, bro. That did not like, go over well. I, I, I didn't do that. I yeah. did not do that, obviously. It's funny. I was just talking to Chris. Like, once we get in, once, once we get in here, once... I I keep it pretty light out there, but like once we get in here and shut these fucking doors, like then it's like the the gloves come off and you talk real regular. Cause I I talked I talked to HR about that shit. I'm like, look, man, we doing a show, so like I need to know know that I can talk freely in the goddamn in in my motherfucking studio. I understand me. I, I'm not gonna be yelling. Look at that fucking whore. <laughs> God. Look at that cunt whore. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, uh, it smells like whores and fucking ketchup in this place. What the fuck is going on? I would have thrown something at him. I was like, guys. What was the, what was the, what was the setup for the joke? I don't know. There was something about, there was a story and then the word whore came up as the, one of the punchlines about, I can't remember what it was, but whore, it was mentioned and then uh, some women got upset. I was like, well, yeah. So they, the state, they were reading just from a story? Uh, no, it was a, it was a oh. story. It was just a joke they were making. Okay, all right. The, okay. the term whore is sensitive. You gotta say prostitute. <laughs> these whores hate hearing pro. <laughs> these, these, these bitches hate hearing the word whore. It fucking kills them. <laughs> Whatever, I got that from fucking boys in the hood. Um, yeah. Yeah, don't, yeah, don't be saying foul language. Also, complaints about your coworkers or boss. I complain about your ass all the time. Everyone knows that, by the way, yep. out there. Everybody. Bro, it was so bad before the first year. It would just be like me cussing John's ass out and no one would look up. It was, it was real <laughs> fucking uncomfortable for everybody. It was tense. I ain't give a fuck either. Like, 
I know how people think. I know how people see me in this fucking office, and I don't give a fuck. <laughs> They're also aware of that. You can, no, they, you can love me or hate me, either or. <laughs> like, just how can he talk to John like that? Like, cause you worry about your show, I worry about my fucking show. Also, criticism of the company's strategy. That's it. Don't complain about where we're going. Where are we going, by the way? I used to, I used to criticize. I'd be like, we don't got enough Latin channels, bro. We need more Latin channels. Well, according to the news reports, we've got all the money. We got all the money? Oh, boy. I don't even know what the fuck that means. We're buying. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. I don't, yeah. I don't think you should talk about it, but all right. <laughs> Just go online. Uh, that's what's up. Yo, yeah. All right. That's cool. There it is. Boom. Oh, there it is. All right, this guy that we had on a couple years ago, Cody Wilson. Remember him? Yeah, he was the fucking, he did the 3D 3D printing with the guns. He's still fighting that. My uh, man. That war. Well, how's he fighting that war? Didn't they, they just said they, it was like a First Amendment thing. Sure, but it's back and forth, and it depends on the state. And I mean, you can go out there and get the plans to to print your 3D gun if you want to, but... I think people are making a bigger deal out of it than... It's literally cheaper just to go buy a fucking black market gun than uh, buy a fucking printer and print... Like, do you know how much it would cost to get the printer that would print the 3D gun? Thousands. Thousands of dollars. And I've read the gun. It's just a piece of garbage. You don't really want to go out there and fire this thing. Yeah, it's, it's probably like a one-time use. It's probably like some shit from the 1800s style. You know what I mean? But he's got other problems now. What's he got? He has been accused of paying for sex with an underage girl. Where at? This is, it looks like, in Texas. Ooh, buddy. So... And he's facing charges of sexual assault, a second-degree felony, mm. and... So the court documents say that this teenager, who's younger than 17, told Ugh. police that the two met at on SugarDaddyMeat.com. And then the teen told investigators that Wilson used the uh, username Sanjuro, uh, but during the conversation he gave his full name and said that he was a big deal. He, yeah. And uh, at some point they had intercourse and oral sex in a hotel room. This bitch set his ass up. Something's weird. But. Incidentally, he's not been arrested, and it's unclear why he's being charged with sexual assault. But this is not maybe good. it's just that's fucked up, dog. Yo, you go on a you got. I guess you got to check IDs and shit. Like he he got caught slipping, but it, the way you the way you went into that, it sounded like it was gonna be way worse. You know what I mean? It sounded like yo he. You go on Sugar Daddy Meetup, you just f figure that these chicks are 18 years old, like Tinder or some shit like that. But you got to check IDs, bro. You got to check IDs. Or else you can get caught out there. Yeah, if she looks young, stay away. <laughs> bro, you can't tell. Bro, like, I can't, man. I cannot tell from 18 to 30 nowadays, bro. You can tell an 18 year old. Yeah, when they fucking start talking or some yeah. shit like that. But, like, it's fine. Especially out here, like, in LA, style wise, like, they all dress all trendy and shit. Like. Would you want to hang out with a sugar baby? Is that something you want to do? Nah, pay man. Nah, nah, nah. Every, some, sometimes I just fuck a girl and pay her just, just because it's disgusting. You know what I mean? <laughs> You know, but like we was gonna fuck. I was gonna fuck her for free anyway. But like, I just like the idea of being like, here, take some money. You're not combing you. The, you but I don't. Campus, I, right? I don't give them like enough money where it's like it's, it's making much of a difference for either one of us. Damn, he got caught out there. Doesn't look good. <sighs> no, nah, it doesn't. It doesn't. I wonder how much, uh, how responsible the, the website is. That they should have checked her out, maybe. He probably has some money. He may be able to Look, yeah, he'll, he'll, I'm sure he'll be, he'll be fine. But like, 
and ultimately it's ultimately at the end of the day it's your responsibility to make sure that you're not fucking a goddamn teenager but like when i hop on when i when like tinder and shit was popping i was never that that i just figured everybody was of age but even look at the website. I'm going, um, what is it, sugardaddymeat.com. Okay, look at our man there. He looks like a daddy. And she looks she looks young. Come on. That's the whole thing about fucking sugar daddies. That's the, Don't you understand, John? It's like it's like older fucking dudes that are taking care of fucking younger chicks. Because they're, they, they're old, they're established, they got money, they got, they got disposable income. And they got these, these these young chicks that like to fucking like nice bags or that are in school or some shit and they trade pussy for fucking money. What is it going to be a fucking old lady on there with him? <laughs> Doubtful. She could be eighteen. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, man. Like that's a, that's a tough one, man. Like that's fucked up. You got to check that ID, bro, or else you get caught out there. And you got to know it's every state is a different law. Every state is a different number. Bible Belt, it's all 16. Like, <laughs> that shit is young as fuck out there. Bible Belt, that shit is 16 out here. I think it's 18. Yeah. Yeah, man. Well, hopefully justice is served. Cody Wilson, 3D gun maker. I liked him, man. He was cool. And I liked what he stood for, but this this is a very unfortunate uh, predicament that he got himself caught up in. Experts are confirming that airplanes are vile canisters of germs. In no case shit. You're wondering, some studies estimate that up to twenty percent of passengers on commercial airplanes will develop respiratory infections within a week of flying. I'm, bro, yeah. We've talked about it. Tray tables, pillows, headrests, armrests, and of course the bathroom. The list goes on to the places you will. Really Tray tables, are, they said, is the dirtiest one. But beyond that, since the air is circulating, this viral cloud is uh, within three feet of face to face contact. Uh, you know, if you're next to somebody who's coughing, but again, the air is circulating, so odds are if someone's sick, it's coming your way. Yeah, you, you got to get you one of them SARS masks or some shit like that. They bring that up. You can wear a face mask. Didn't you do that? Didn't you try that? You did that here in the office. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, I, can't, I was coming to work with the SARS mask for a while. Yeah, that's kind of hard to hide when you do that. <laughs> that's uh, co according to Huff Post, that's a big no-no. <laughs> no one wants to know about your sickness. Man, I, yeah, shit, I had a rough year, fucking health-wise. Jesus Christ. Be on your SARS mask, wash your hands, get the flu shot, and just cross your fingers because if you're on the plane. I went and got a, you can get those fucking, I don't know how well they work or not, but they you go get you like a fucking drip, one of those vitamin drips where they give you the direct IVs. They got like a traveler drip or it's just like all the vitamins that you need to help fight off shit. You just went to... Just a regular there's, there's one over here on Santa Monica. Just a store. You walked in it's there. It's a store that sells smoothies, and in the back there's a fucking nurse that gives drips. And they, they put a needle in you? Yeah. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> John, I was shooting things. Like, <laughs> what is this? <laughs> like, Which some ladies out there... I was shooting stuff I found on the street. Like, what's the fuck? This, this shit at least came in a bag. You know what I mean? Well, she's out front slinging coffee, and then she comes back and puts a needle in your arm? Nah, oh, they, no, they, they got the fucking smoothie makers, and then they got the fucking trained nurse. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> they got someone that handles bananas, and then the, the person over there fucking pokes you. They put the little, they got the bag, they got the drip. Did it work? You feel better? Yeah, I was feeling bad and I had, to, I had to, um, I had to go do a reading and I fucking, I went and got that shit done the day before and it just fought it off. It just like kept it at bay. All right. All yeah. right. I, believe, I don't know if it's FDA approved, but. Yeah. <laughs> Any chance you'll bring the, the mask on the plane? You're about to fly again. I gotta find somebody gave me a gang in a mask. I gotta, I gotta find them bitches. I put them somewhere in my room. 
I was pretty high when I was cleaning up, and I can't remember where the fuck I put them. <laughs> I think they're in my chest. I have a chest at the end of my bed to keep my fucking, all my gangster ass sweaters. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> All right, there you go. Planes are disgusting. Thanks, John. Be Dis- careful. I don't even think I asked to hear about that one. Sometimes you be just hitting stories that I didn't even want to hear. I, I, didn't, had that I on, didn't even circle that one. I had that on the burner. It's been there for a while. I, I, I could show you. I can I'm go. sure you had it on the burner, but there was, I literally picked like eight different stories a day, and you're like, I'm going to hit them with this fucking boring <laughs> piece of shit. That was a warning. You're about and to fly Just so in. you know. Plans are you. dirty. <laughs> I got nothing else to say. All right. Hey, plans are dirty. News flash. Plans are dirty. Got some good news. And motherfuckers be farting like a motherfucker. <laughs> you, you you know they be pushing down all uh, all hard and the, and then farting and shit. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. I'm flying first class to Detroit. Yeah, bitch. You are? Yeah. Really? S- stunting on them. Why? Because I don't want to be next to poor people. Oh, man. <laughs> the motherfuckers got diseases. How much more is it for first class, really? It was a it was considerable amount more. No, actually, no. I got a I got a one way. I found a first class one way for five seventy. Ugh. Ugh. It's not terrible. No, nah, not bad at all. Got to sit with no peasants. Fucking chop it up. I'm a man of the people. Motherfucker, because you have to be. <laughs> you ain't got no choice, John. I'm conditioned to be a man of the people. I, I know. You You are. You are a plebe. No. You a peasant. I'm out there fighting the good fight. <laughs> that's what That's what they, That's what the losers say. <laughs> I'm not winning, but it's not a total loss yet. Still in the fight. He's wearing his pencil lead fucking shirt too. That that with the giant butterfly collar <laughs> stuck in between. The collar is like somewhere from seventy seven and ninety two. I can't tell. Like it's just that flyaway collar. It's not the best shirt, but he's, outside of you, no one hates it. He's wearing his nah. You should do that. That's your rainy day shirt. That whole just depressing ass gray ass look overcast ass shirt. There are a couple of women in the office who regularly come up to me and tell me about clothing sales. I, I, nearly every other week, they, they they tip me off like, oh, "Hey, there's a sale over there." There's John, a sale can't over you there. just take a fucking? I'm, I, I I get the hint. That's you can't even take a yeah. hint. They're concerned. I know. They are. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> yo, bro, it's fucking bad. bad it's not news. that bad. I look fine. I look fine. I'm, yo, that collar will come back in style in a few years, and then you'll be stunting on them. But right now, <laughs> that that length is just... It just doesn't look good. Bro, it's hitting your shoulders, man. It, like, it, that bitch is wide than a motherfucker. It, and if, it's going to be that big, button it up more. You know what I'm saying? Like, there are no buttons. They just... It's just... Oh, man. Just, just out there. Fucking... And how'd you come up with the color? Why did you think that was a good idea? <laughs> it's gray. Gray, and it goes with everything. That shit looks like depression. <laughs> it looks normal. It looks pleasant. Oh that shit look fucked up, man. That shit look like... Oh, <laughs> See, when I get up, I look at the shirt, and I think, okay, this is not good for the office because of that. It's a standard shirt. For real, man, I be thinking about the Dust Bowl and fucking Depression Era shit every time. Every time I see your ass, bro. Ah, uh, got some positive news. Get your door. Can't stop me. <laughs> yeah, yo, fucking, yeah, you do. You look like if, yep, the Huckleberry fan group got old and got AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> Hibbleberry fan. <laughs> Not positive. <laughs> Very positive. <laughs> Go ahead. And now, time for good news. There is this kid out of Arizona, and he plays for Brophy Prep. He's blind, and he is playing on the football team. He just scored a couple of touchdowns recently. Did they let him score the touchdowns? I mean, I is Because you know how they do that shit. Like, they'll get, like, the handicapped kid, and they'll... 
hand, hand him the ball and let him run 60 yards and everybody will miss the tackle on purpose. Well, I don't think he's running, uh, you know, because, no, yo, like dude, that. I had that one motherfucker on that did the, right. that did clicking and could fucking move without, he could ride a bike. That dude was a badass. Yeah. Oh, he was a beast. Like, he, he walked up in this bitch and was just like, and moved all the way around the room and could find his chair, sat down, he didn't need shit. Did well, he click in? Did he click, click, click well, he, and run in? Or did they just fucking he, handle the ball and no one tackled him? He does explain it a bit, but the guy, the kid's name is Adonis Watt. You can hear from his dad first, but then Adonis speaks for a minute here. All right, let's hear it. Okay. We found out he had glaucoma at the age of, I think it was four, around four. Then after that, like a few years after that, he lost his life like completely. I mean, you just got to run through them, you know, you can't. For example, if it's a run play, I'm on the left side, quarterback is supposed to go across him and go right. You, you got to, like, run through it so I can know exactly, like, where I'm supposed to be. Oh, he sounds like, like he actually play, is. Really, he's just, he's a person. God gives everyone, everyone challenges in their life, and he's clearly over, overcome his, you know, he's, his, his personality is crazy, crazy fun. Little Ryan Every Wilson on the field, talking shit. You wake up, it's like, man, Donaldson's going to be funny today. All right, man, play, show me him doing what he does. All right, so. Show, show me the play. Here we go. All right, let's see. So there's no audio on this, but. All right, so they snapped the ball. All right, go ahead, hit play. All right, it's, it's going. It's high set, school. Set, set. All right, set. They snapped the ball, hand it off. Oh no, he's no. They trying to they trying to get his ass. Yeah. All right, yeah. yeah. All right, yeah, no. All right, yeah. Props. That's fucking cool. And the touchdown runs were from one and three yards, and the Mountain View players were defending Brophy freshman. No, they and, were. Yeah, yeah, they was they was playing D. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah, fucking. Hell, I love that shit. On the side note, what you ever do you ever just want when when they like let the fucking, you know, the kid with like the bum leg run it in don't you ever just want someone to just come up and just tackle his ass Take him out the knees. <laughs> don't, don't, the knees. don't you kind of want that shit you'd be like yeah this is this is cool but you know it'd be real funny <laughs> if someone didn't tell the one guy about it someone forgot to tell the dn that they were gonna let him score nah all right Wait, fuck it <laughs> that's the news you are checking out the All Out Show with Rude Jude on demand. All right, man. I want to thank Rich DeMiro for coming through. Too short for stopping in. On the boards, Chris. On the phones, an associate producer, Keenan. John is the newsman and producer. Alex is the other producer. What's our intern name again? The new intern? Lelet. 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 No, Lalit. Lalit. It's, it's Lalit, ain't it? She said anything. Girl, don't say that shit. Make motherfuckers pronounce your name right. Say it. What's your name? Say it. Lilit. Lilit. Yes. Yes. Lilit. Got it. Boom. Raka. Lilit. All right. Done. Tune in tomorrow for more All Out Show. Don't you go nowhere.